Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and take a look at how code damn playgrounds work by actually using something known as dynamic DNS. Now, if this sounds like a huge term to you, then don't worry because I mean, when I came across writing a DNS server and how we have to do that, that's that was exactly my reaction. What is a dynamic DNS? How do you deploy it and all that stuff? But it's relatively easy once you do it. In a hindsight, it seems like, oh, this was just another program or just another software which you have written. But but it is a beautiful concept and let me just go ahead and showcase you how code damn playgrounds today work with the help of this thing if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow all right so the first thing i'm going to do is navigate over to the code damn playgrounds and over here you can see i already have a couple of pages but i'm going to go ahead and create a new html css playground let's say dynamic dns demonstration i mean it doesn't really matter because this is just a playground for showcasing you how the playground itself is working. So you're going to see that it boots up in a few seconds. And the moment it boots up is something interesting happens. You see that we have a domain on the right, which is watchattack.codedam.app, right? Now, in this case, this is random and it will be random whenever you reload this because our current infrastructure, the way this works is that it assigns you a random domain on any single reload right you see now it's built money.codedam.app so you see that it's a combination of a couple of random words .codedam.app and then the port number on which your container is listening as well so you see if i write static server p1337 no cache hit enter if i go ahead and take a look over here you're gonna see that it starts working on 1337 if i do the same thing but let's say on port 1338 you're gonna see that it starts working on port number 1338 just like you would expect to write localhost 1337 and localhost 1338 right but the only difference is at least for now at codedam we only expose these two ports 1337 and 1338 and by default only this 1337 port is embedded on the right now this is fine and good but the really interesting part is that how this subdomain which is dynamically allocated automatically gets connected to your instance or this container in this case now in a broader sense in a overview a bird's eye overview the way codedam playgrounds work is that this is a docker container right this terminal which you see is a real linux computer connected to some computer in the cloud and this url which you get is basically the url uh, which has to resolve to two things the first thing is the physical server of this that is the actual ip address of the server and the second thing is this container itself because on a single container there are multiple on a single server there are multiple docker containers running right so we need two things to reach to this particular container the ip address of the physical host and the you know the container id or some sort of identifier so that we can identify which container it is within that physical server all right so how does this information help us convey um which ip address which we have to reach it doesn't and that's that's the thing this subdomain over here actually has no information in itself embedded where it has to be redirected or which IP address it has to be resolved. So how does this get this 165, 22, 46 and 102? Now for this, we have to actually see how the DNS is resolved for this request. Because remember that DNS is the actual thing which whatever DNS server responds, the browser visits that particular URL. So in this case, we had to write our own custom DNS server. That means this over here when Chrome asks my ISP and then my ISP asks some you know root level dot com TLD in this case dot app TLD and what is the IP address then it gets redirected to name cheap for example any any chain of uh, ISPs doesn't really matter the final server which needs to return this is our server that is we say that hey the IP address of belt money dot code down dot app is 165.22.46.102 and where does our server take place in that case all right so the way it works is the follows so i'm going to go ahead and write a command in cli which obviously i don't expect you to understand but what this command actually is doing is that it's extracting something known as authoritative name servers now what authoritative name servers is is like i said the server which is at the end of the chain which has to respond to the ip address that particular server where is that server what is the ip address of that server so 
if I click on enter after writing, if I hit enter after writing this command, you're going to see that actually gives us the authoritative name servers for codedam.app domain in this authority section over here. So you see that authority section contains these two name servers, ns2.codedam.app and ns1.codedam.app. And the a record, which is basically the IP addresses of these computers are also passed in the additional section. This means that whenever anyone wants to resolve any domain at all on codedam.app, abc.codedam.x, app.xyz.codedam.app, codedam.codedam.app, anything, it has to ask these two servers finally. This is the responsibility of these two servers to respond to what the query is. And guess who controls these two servers? We do. So these two servers are actually deployed in two different regions in AWS. And these servers are actually running on EC2 instances, right? So these are EC2 servers, which are running as DNS servers, right? So it's not like we are doing any sort of communication to some other servers. It's like it's receiving communications from routers all over the internet, right? So if you are sitting in India or US or UK or Canada, it doesn't really matter. And if you visit this domain, finally, some IP address in the chain is contacting these servers and asking that, hey, do you know the IP address of this? And this server has to respond. Yes, because if it does not respond, then you know you would get a page like not found something like that which you see that the ip address of this domain cannot be resolved so you see these two servers are the real deal and i can actually over here directly query them as well so you see over here if i write ns1.codedam.app and you can see i'm also writing at the rate this ip address which basically means that i want this server over here to resolve my query but in this case it wouldn't really matter if i even if i remove this because I mean, this is the authoritative name server in any way, so it has to answer this. So you see, when I do that, it actually returns me the same IP address, which is the NS1 itself. If I do the same thing with belt money, you're going to see that it returns me the same thing. So I can say this thing, but instead of NS1, I can just say beltmoney.codedam.app and it's going to just say me the IP address, which is over here. And this IP address, mind you, which is running on this DNS server, is dynamically computed obviously so let's take a look at an actual picture of the code which is really running on these servers you can see over here we have hard-coded responses for ns1 and ns2 subdomains which is fine because you know if i want to get an a record for an ns1 i cannot really ask the server itself because that is the server and the second thing is if it is not NS1, if it is not NS2, then we perform a DynamoDB query, which includes the subdomain as the key, and we get the IP address out of it. And the way this DynamoDB gets populated is when your container gets booted, which is something which we'll discuss in some other day. But the idea is that this is the place where we get the IP address. We get it from a table. It's kind of like a lookup, but instead of having fast or file-based lookup for an IP address, just like you would have an ETC host file or anything like that, we actually use a DynamoDB so that it can be programmed by other microservices running as well. And once we have that, we just create a you know, DNS response, return it, create a, a record, and return it as well. So you see over here, whenever you request a change which propagates to the server, we perform a DynamoDB request to extract out what exactly should be the host or the physical host for this now how do we get to let's say the part where this container is you know container is linked to the physical host that's something for another day but yeah i mean that's how basically our dynamic dns server looks like and works like and i would love to see you guys also building a lot of cool stuff a lot of cool projects over here because we have been making a lot of changes to code dam playgrounds and you're going to be surprised with the amount of changes coming at code dam in the coming weeks and the coming days so stay tuned make sure you like and subscribe because i have a lot to share about code dam playgrounds in the coming few days and uh, yep, I mean, this is basically a fully functional IDE at this point where you can start servers at different ports, have a couple of terminals, have any sort of repository, program the basically the whole 
playground as well with the yaml like syntax and a lot more so there's a lot of content which is needed for you to also educate in terms of how to work properly with playground but that should be a good start so yep that's basically it for this video hopefully you liked enjoyed and learned something new if you did make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and send it to a friend that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching